You guys, crewman here, and you just bought an AL Zero, and you want to get it to go from this to this. Stay tuned and watch this video, and we'll guide you through the whole process of un from unboxing your AL Zero to getting it set up and mining, because you need to get this up as fast as you can to maximize those early yields. All right, so stay tuned after a word from our sponsor. So thank you to Ice River for sponsoring this video and sending me over the AL Zero to review. You can buy any Alethium or Caspa ASICs on their store, and they had a massive price discount on or on Caspa ASICs. Obviously, the Caspa hash rate has gone through the roof, but you can look at an Ice River KS Zero Ultra as basically a bit axe right now that uses a little bit more power, but has a higher likelihood to find Caspa blocks. So it could be the perfect Christmas gift for the holidays coming up. And you can also buy the AL Zero for $800 and you can get a power supply as well with it. Please use code CRUITMAN for 2.5% off our Alethium ASICs and 1.5% off Caspa ASICs. So thank you again to Ice River for sponsoring this video and please use code CRUITMAN to save a little bit of money on these ASICs. Now there are two ways to set this thing up once you unbox it. The first way is to use the power supply that came with it and the second way is to use the barrel plug from the veteran miners website theveteranminer.com now in my opinion i think this is the far superior way to set it up but i will quickly run through the pros and cons of both of these and then you can make your own decision and i will show you how to set both of them up first is a laptop brick pro is a simple easy comes with the comes with the uh, al0 you can pay an extra 20 dollars for it from ice river direct or your resellers most likely will include a power supply as well. If not, you can buy a standard laptop power supply brick as long as it can do 100 watts, more if you plan on OCing it in the future, which I do not recommend. So essentially all you have to do is plug this in and you're good to go. Now the negatives is I don't like running these things 24 seven. They tend to get really hot. And for me to feel comfortable, I usually have a fan blowing on the laptop brick itself. Second way you can do it is with the Veteran Miner Barrel Plug Cable. It's The pros are it looks good, it's high quality, and it's great, and you don't have a power brick. The cons are you need a server power supply, and you cannot overclock with this. You can only use it at stock, which in my opinion is fine. We're going to go ahead and show you how to set up both options right now, and then we're going to go in and show you how to get this thing up in the, in the web GUI and get it all set up and get you mining. All right, so the first setup, you can see the AL box right here. This is actually a KS0, but it's essentially the same thing. And you can see the barrel connector is connected to the laptop brick, which is connected to uh, 120 or 240. In this case, it's 120. And you can see that I have a fan blowing on the power supply because I just think these things get way too hot. Now, this is a 180 watt brick, but still i just i think even the stock ones run too hot but anyway it's pretty simple you just plug it in and you're good to go now ice river a6 tend to run a little like to run a little bit on the hotter side so you can choose to put a fan in it or not and in this setting this is the only thing that's on in this room so i don't need to put a fan on it all right so that's how you set it up with a laptop brick I'll show you guys how to set up the veteran miner barrel cable now so quick shout out to veteran miner Use code CRUITMAN for 10% off your order. These cables are high quality and they're made in the USA. And in the, this case, this one kind of glows in the dark. It's pretty cool. So essentially what you do is you plug the barrel cable into the back of the AL0, and then you plug the six pin into the server power supply. You can power the server power supply via 120 or 240. This is a 1200 watt server power supply and it's only powering a KS0 Ultra and the AL0. Another thing I, I would also recommend too is you probably want a fan depending on your environment. If you're running in a hotter environment, like my shed can get pretty hot. I have a pair of Noctua fans, one on top of each uh, ASIC. Now, one thing that I would recommend though is you do not power them via the USB. That is a waste and they will not get enough power to make a difference and you're just, you're just wasting it essentially. So I used a PWM fan controller and I connected it to a Molex. I basically had these lying around and I plugged it in to the server power supply. Now, you wanna get these ASICs to run in between uh, 70, 70 C, give or take, is where we think it needs to be. So whether or not you need a fan is up to you, but if you're running in a hotter environment, I certainly would recommend using one. 
So that's it. This is quick and easy. And again, shout out to Veteran Miner. Use code CREWMAN for 10% off. I'll put a link down below for this. So now let me show you how to get these things set up in the web GUI. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you where you can find the manuals just in case you need them and there's something that this guide might have left out that applies to just you. You want to go to Ice River's website, remember it's iceriver.io, and then you want to go all the way to the bottom, and then you want to click on tutorial, and then you want to click on the KS0 slash pro manual, which is right here. And then the first thing that you're going to need to do is you want to log on to the Ice River ASIC. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to find your IP address. Now you, you know how to do that. You basically go into your network, you find the name of the Ice River machine. In this case, it's actually named Ice River, which is different than the KS0 and the KS0 Pro. And then you're going to want to type in admin for the pass for the username and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for the password, as you can see right here. Remember, it's admin for the username and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for the password. Once you log in, the GUI should look something exactly like this. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the side of the menu where it says Ice River and Blue, and you're going to want to click User Settings. That's step one. And then step two, you need to reset your password. So the current password is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you got to type in your new password, whatever you may you need that to be. You need to make sure you do that ASAP and then it's going to log you out and then it's going to make you log back in. And remember the username is admin and the password is whatever your latest password is. And then what you want to do after that is you want to go back to the menu and you want to click mining settings and you want to change your pool and your worker so that it mines to the pool of your choice and the worker of your own choice. Now you can do one of two, th one of three things. You can use the pool that I recommend. You can use the pool that they have as, as default, or you can use your own pool. But either way, you're going to have to change your wallet worker name as well. So the first step is you're going to want to fill in the pool address. And I use Viper Pool because they're a trusted pool, and I know the pool operator, and I think they're good guys. This is not paid for by them. It's just the pool I prefer to use. So you're going to want to go to this website right here, viper.net slash mine slash elf, and you see the Elethium servers. You essentially want to go to the one you need. So in my case, I'm going to use USA Southeast. You want to click on the one that you need, and I clicked on the top, the first one, Stratum plus TCP USSC.viper5050 address. You copy it. And it should look exactly like this. Step five, you want to put your wallet and it should look exactly like this. You can see I have the Stratum plus TCP for Viper, right? And you want to put them on all three pool, pool slots because I've seen a bug where it would only mine off the third one before and a bug would only mine off the first one. So you just cover, cover all your bases. And then finally, you put your address right here on step five. Now, you basically want to put your Alethium address dot the worker name or if you only have one Alethium miner you don't even need to put the worker name it'll just default to whatever the basic name is so you just can put the wallet right there and then finally you want to hit the restart button and restart your miner and you're good to go so that's it pretty easy pretty simple steps in my opinion if you have any more questions, please leave a comment down below. I want to give a quick shout out to Veteran Miner for supplying me with the cable. Please go check out his website and use code CRUIT for 10% off. And thank you to Ice River for sponsoring this video by sending me their ASIC. So please consider using my code CRUITMAN there for 1.5% off CASPA ASICs, 2.5% off Lithium ASIC, ASICs. Thank you again. And also please consider becoming a member of this channel. Any proceeds go right back to the channel to make great content like this. So if this video helped, please like and sub. Thank you for watching. Crewman is out.